Debian is a free and open source Linux distribution and Ubuntu, one of its most famous derived distribution, has long been a popular choice among Linux users. But in this video I'm diving into the gaming performance of two other Debian based Linux distributions, PopOS and PicaOS. PopOS is a somewhat well-known distribution developed by System76, while PicaOS is a newer, lesser-known distro that focuses on gaming and ships with the latest Linux kernel by default. I'm going to test both of them using a NVIDIA RTX 5080 and see if running on the latest kernel makes any real difference when gaming. At the end of the video, I'll also share my personal take on which distro I'd pick for gaming. Quick note. Running on the latest kernel often means better support for newer hardware. PicaOS ships with kernel 6.14 and comes with NT-Sync, which enables better compatibility for Windows apps by supporting NT-synchronization primitives. To be honest, I don't know what that means. Meanwhile, PopOS out of the box is using kernel 6.12, a bit older but I didn't run into any issues with the RTX 5080 and my hardware. Both distros shipped with the same NVIDIA driver version, so this test should be a fair comparison. I planned to benchmark a range of games on both distros, but I ran into some problems on PicaOS. Marvel Rivals refused to start no matter which translation layer I used. Assassin's Creed Shadow froze in the menu screen. I couldn't find a way to make it work. If anyone has managed to get Assassin's Creed Shadows run on NVIDIA GPUs under Linux, let me know in the comment section below as I would like to include it in future videos. I did see that it works on AMD GPUs, at least according to some Reddit threads. Another issue I faced on PicaOS was that the desktop entered software rendering mode after a reboot, which broke the taskbar icons as they disappeared when I hovered over them. Switching manually to hardware rendering fixed the problem. This is the first time I've encountered this issue on any distro. When it comes to the performance stats, I use GeoOverlay on Linux with a polling rate of 200 milliseconds. On Windows, I used MSI Afterburner. Quick heads up. On PopOS, GeoOverlay seemed to give identical values for the 1% and 0.1% lows. Not sure why, but worth mentioning. All side-by-side -side runs include the in-game settings used for testing. Let's start with the raster side-by-side -side runs first. The writer of these pages knows what will happen. Because they're behind this, or because they can see what's coming. Impossible things are happening here. The writer of these pages knows what will happen. Because they're behind this, or because they can see what's coming. Impossible things are happening here. They mustn't get away. Got that? Call out. They mustn't get away. Got that? Call.
Can't wait. And you don't want to just tell me? You need to see it. Can't wait. And you don't want to just tell me? You need to see it. At 1440p, Windows had a visible lead in nearly all games except for Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, where PicaOS was only 2 frames per second behind. PicaOS performed better than PopOS in Alan Wake 2 and Monster Hunter Wilds, while PopOS had a small advantage in Witcher 3. Now, I want to mention something when it comes to Alan Wake 2. While PopOS produced stable results in free runs, I did notice random GPU utilization drops, causing stuttering even at 4K, so take the results with a grain of salt. This didn't happen in PicaOS. Overall, Windows outperformed PicaOS by about 22%. Looking at the 1% averages across all games, PopOS has a minor advantage over PicaOS due to the better 1% low values obtained in Counter-Strike 2, but this is deceiving as PicaOS fell smoother. At 4K, PopOS edged out PicaOS in Alan Wake 2, but again the performance was inconsistent. Yet again Windows leads when using Nvidia hardware, but this is not new. PicaOS outperformed PopOS in Black Me Fukong, but the advantage is around 3 frames per second. Overall, the performance advantage that Windows has over the two Linux distros stands at around 20%. Due to the fact that Assassin's Creed Shadows didn't work and that ray tracing is not available in Monster Hunter Wilds in Linux, the ray tracing game sample is smaller. The writer of these pages knows what will happen. Because they're behind this, or because they can see what's coming. Impossible things are happening here. The writer of these pages knows what will happen. Because they're behind this, or because they can see what's coming. Impossible things are happening here. In the old oak tree, grew inside her with devilish feet. Got a lump of bread today. May the sun shine upon you. Let's start first with the 1440p results. Windows has a big advantage here, at least in the two path tracing games. 
Alan Wake 2 and Black Myth Wukong. In these two games, Peak OS delivers better performance than Pop OS, while when ray tracing is in the mix, in this case Witcher 3, Pop OS had the upper hand. Based on this small sample of games, Windows enjoys a 24% performance advantage over Linux. Bumping up the resolution in the two path tracing games, Windows enjoys a huge performance advantage. I'm not sure if it's because of upscaling as it was enabled in these two games. For some reason, Pop OS delivers better results than Pika OS in Alan Wake 2. Either way, Windows has a 32% performance advantage at this resolution. So, even though Pop OS was mainly on par with Pika OS, I had less gaming issues when using Pika OS. I still don't know if the performance drops in Pop OS are due to the fact that the 5080 is relatively new and the kernel that comes with Pop OS may be a bit outdated for it, but Pika OS felt smoother. Games had less performance drops, so to say, but this can't be captured with my screen recording card as it maxes out at 60 frames per second. If you are using newer hardware, I would go with the Linux distro that comes with the latest kernel out of the box. Pika OS is tailored for gaming and has pre-installed Falcon game mode, and this means that we just have to follow the documentation and set the command in Steam or Heroic Launcher. With that said, Pika OS is not without issues, as mentioned in the beginning of the video. Also, on a personal note, I am not a fan of the default color theme, though that can be easily changed. Of course, there are more Debian-based distros and Kubuntu 25.04 can be an alternative as it too uses the 6.14 kernel. I also wanted to have a look at Zorin OS, but that one uses an older kernel. Out of the box, it comes with GPU drivers that support the latest NVIDIA GPUs. I wanted to give it a shot, but for some reason, the screen got a yellow tint after a few restarts, so I decided to skip it. Too bad, as I kinda liked the looks of it. And that's it for this video. If you found the video helpful or liked it, hit the thumbs up button, drop a comment below to help with the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel. Take care and hope to see you all in the next one.